Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to look at the basic atomic structure. Now, I have to say, I have seen quite a few questions on this topic on TEAS. So this is uh, something that you really want to uh, know very well. So whatever questions you see on TEAS, you can answer the questions correctly. All right, now I'm going to break this to two videos because otherwise uh, it will be too long. So the two parts are going to be about the kind of new objectives for this lesson. Now, even though they are new objectives, they're really kind of based on the old content, but I still want to point it out. So these are the learning objectives for T6 and then for T7, you can see the wording is a little bit different, right? Um, first, you have identify the number of electrons, protons, and neutrons in an atom or an ion. Uh, this is exactly what questions that I have seen on the ATI mock test. You need to figure out the numbers of electrons, protons, or neutrons with given information. And then the second new-ish thing is use the periodic table to explain and predict the properties of, of elements. And you can see previously, it's identified the number of electrons and protons using the periodic table, right? It, has, it, it didn't mention anything about the chemical properties of elements. But here, you kind of need to predict the properties of elements based on the information in the periodic table and how atoms may behave, right? Because they have a different number of electrons in the valence shell. So we're going to have two videos to discuss these two separate topics. All right, now let's look at the first one, um, how to identify the numbers of subatomic um, particles in an atom or an ion. Now, I have talked about this in detail in the video for T6, so I'm just going to do a quick recap. For an atom, there are three subatomic particles. Protons and neutrons are located in the center of the, of the atom, and this center part is called the nucleus, or the core of an atom. Now, the nucleus of an atom is different than the nucleus uh, of a cell. Okay? So the nucleus, again, for an atom is just kind of the center of the atom. Now, these two subatomic particles have different properties. Um, protons are positively charged. And neutrons, based on the name, no charge, right? Uh, electrically neutral, no charge. And surrounding the nucleus, you have electrons that are flying in high speed. Right? Now, electrons are negatively charged. But electrons are very small, so they don't carry any weight. So the weight is negligible. But protons and neutrons are a lot bigger. So each proton or each neutron will carry one atomic weight. Now, it's almost a, a, a unitless, right? It doesn't have any units. So it's just one for a proton and a neutron. Now, to remember the charge, you can use this trick. Proton starts with a P, right? And then positive also starts with a P. So you know that protons are positively charged. And then neutrons, you know, neutron, right? Uh, again, like I said, the name kind of gives away. And in terms of weight, um, you just have to remember, you know, electrons are very small. That's why they can fly in high speed, right? Because they're very small. They can move very quickly. So the only subatomic particles that have weight is the other two, right? The protons and the neutrons. Okay, so as long as you can remember the charge and the weight information for the three types of particles, then you can solve any problems. I have summarized three rules to kind of help you identify the number, the weight of different particles in an atom. Atomic number is the same as the number of protons. So atomic number is just when we put elements in order in the periodic table, we order them based on the number of protons. So that's why the atomic number and the number of protons are exactly the same. Okay. The second rule, the number of protons equals number of electrons. Now that makes sense too, because an atom is neutral, 
And that's because the number of positive charge from protons is the same as the negative charge from electrons. So overall, the um, atom is neutral, right? But if you look at more closely at each type of particles, then yes, there's positive and then there's a negative, right? Associated with protons and neutrons. But overall, an atom is neutral. And again, that's because the charge from the neutrons and the protons kind of cancel out. Now, the very last rule, this is about the weight or mass. The atomic mass of an element is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Okay? So you don't see electrons on there because electrons don't weigh much. So we just kind of ignore electrons when we calculate the atomic mass. OK, so I have an example here. The atomic number of oxygen is 6. So then you can extrapolate right, that the number of protons should also be 6. And the number of electrons, same as number of protons, right? because they carry the same charge, same amount of charge, and they cancel out. Um, so number of electrons is also 6. So you can see with just this one piece of information, right? you can figure out the number of two particles, which is pretty useful. Now, what if I tell you the atomic weight of uh, an oxygen atom is 16? Now, if it is 16, so that means the, the total of protons and neutrons is 16, right? And you already know that the number of protons is 6. So the, the number of neutrons will be 16 minus 6. Right, and that's 10. Now, I have a note here. I recently added this note because I think some students are a little bit confused. Now, the number of neutrons is not shown on the periodic table. Right? On the periodic table, you have the, num you have the atomic number. You have the atomic weight. Right? That's the main information. Number of neutrons is either provided if the question is about atomic weight, you need the number of neutrons. Or maybe that's what the question asks for. So then you need to know the atomic weight and the number of protons. For each element, you have isotopes. We talked about this in the T6 video. Elements may have multiple isotopes. And different isotopes have a different number of neutrons. So for example, oxygen. There's oxygen 16 and oxygen 18, right? See, these two types of oxygen atoms carry different number of neutrons. So you can see that depending on which isotope you're talking about, the number of neutrons can vary, right? So that's why um, you do not have to memorize the number of neutrons for any element for T's. That information will be given, or that's something that you need to determine based on two other pieces of information, right? Atomic weight and the number of protons. Now let's do some practice questions. Number one. The atomic number of phosphorus is 15, and the atomic number is based on the number of protons. So they're the same. So this is 15, and this is the element, right? It's not ion yet, so it's just that neutral atom. So the number of electrons should be the same as the number of protons, also 15. Okay, next question. The atomic number is 16. So that means the number of protons is 16, number of electrons also 16. Number of neutrons. So this is going to be the atomic weight or atomic mass minus number of protons, right? So the atomic weight is 32 minus protons, 16. That's going to be 16. So for 
this particular case, this particular sulfur isotope has 16 protons, 16 electrons, and also 16 neutrons. So the numbers of protons and neutrons happen to be the same, but they're not always the same. So keep that in mind. So just for this particular case, they're just both 16, but it's, it may not be the case for other elements.